Hi everyone, my name is Teresa and I make videos talking about healing chronic pain and illness symptoms using brain retraining, limbic system and nervous system regulation and healing, and holistic practices including nature and spirituality, yoga and mindfulness. I'm so glad that you're here to learn more today with me and I wanted to explain a little bit about why brain retraining works. I know there's a lot of skepticism out there and some people think it's pseudoscience, but there is real evidence-based science behind brain retraining. So I wanted to just explore a little bit of that today. A big focus in brain retraining is moving away from the obsession over diagnosis and symptom talk. And simply stated, this is because a lot of our ongoing symptoms can be more related to limbic system and nervous system dysregulation, being stuck in the fight or flight and fear sensation, which actually is pro-inflammatory. It creates um, release of adrenaline and the buildup of cortisol in the body, and it can lead to prolonged chronic health and stress states. Whereas if we are regulating our nervous system and finding a healing place for our nervous system to feel safe, our body starts to cut down on inflammation. We start to be in a safer space where our body is able to heal. So even if we are blending Western or conventional medicine with holistic medicine, even those medicines are more able to work in our body during those states of limbic system healing. If we're using holistic modalities, our body is able to shift more into a healing state when we are in parasympathetic activation, which is that rest and digest mode versus fight or flight, which is sympathetic activation of the nervous system. Brain retraining is rooted in the idea of neuroplasticity, the idea that our brain can rewire and create new neural pathways at any time. It is never too late to change our thought patterns, to change the way that our brain is wired. And this isn't just the frontal lobe or the part of our brain that controls our day-to-day -day thoughts and rational thinking. This is deep within our amygdala, within our hippocampus, within the parts of our brain that control deep autonomic responses, fight or flight mode, stress responses, memory formation, how we address what is a threat and how our body subconsciously or unconsciously responds to threats by releasing different hormones related to stress, inflammation, adrenaline and things of that nature. When we are working on healing from chronic pain and chronic illness, we want to be cultivating a sense of new pathways in the brain that are keeping us in a relaxed state where we feel safe, rather than constantly looking for threats, staying locked into hypervigilance, and having a buildup of these stress hormones that can eventually lead to long-term health issues on their own. But if we're already in a state of illness, we're fighting off infection or we're fighting off any kind of disease or pain in the body, they are going to keep us feeling worse. Brain retraining can include a number of things. The way that I like to handle brain retraining and what my program focuses on and what I talk a lot about on this channel is that a big part of it is retraining our thoughts, changing the way we talk to ourselves, changing the things that we focus on, um, changing any hyperfixations we may have and reprogramming ourselves to think about positive thoughts, think hopefully about the future, not over identifying with symptoms or illness. But brain retraining also includes changing our behaviors. So we do a lot of including time in nature to regulate our nervous system, mindfulness, meditation, practicing somatic awareness and gentle movement like yoga, Tai Chi, Pilates, somatically moving our body to release any areas of tension or trauma and to learn how to feel safe in our bodies again practicing breath work to help also regulate our nervous system and anything to help repair and heal vagal nerve, which is the vagus nerve runs from our brain down through our body into our gut. So that gut brain connection is something that comes into play as well when we're talking about stress and overall healing. We also think about how our entire body is connected. So what we eat, how much we're hydrating, our time in nature, our ability to move and feel safe, can even sometimes start with our gut health and work its way up to our brain. The way that we move our bodies and we feel safe with how we're moving, how we're feeling, if we can work on creating a sense of safety in our bodies first, that bottom up approach of feeling safe in our physical body, somatically processing trauma can then work its way up to helping our brain. Or we take a top down approach, which is where we might use 
talk therapy, reprocessing our thoughts, positive affirmations to change our thoughts, change our beliefs, rewire our brain, help shift us into a better state of mind, which then will be a top-down approach and it will over time help our bodies to heal. So our focus is not going to be on targeting and eradicating an infection or a specific source physically of our pain or our disease. When we're integrating brain retraining, we are working on healing the brain and nervous system because we know from the field of psychoneuroimmunology and from recent research that we have to learn how to fix the connection and the communication between our brain, our immune system, our endocrine system, and that even affects our detoxification processes within our bodies. So the way that we think literally informs our cells and how they respond to what they perceive as threats. There has been a growing amount of research on the cell danger response, not only in our individual microcosms, but as a whole and how we respond to our environment. Our mitochondria can actually sense and respond to danger when it senses it in the environment around us. Now that can be interpersonal trauma, that can be environmental pollutants or toxins, that can be invader cells like things like Lyme disease or viral or bacterial infections. And our cells are able to ramp up or ramp down our immune response in relation to what they perceive as threat. So it isn't just our brain that we're retraining, it is literally our cells having their own individual brain, so to speak, that are able to perceive danger and respond appropriately. However, when we're living in a toxic world, there are times where our cells get kind of stuck into this emergency overdrive response. And it's the same thing with our brain. Our amygdala can get locked into hypervigilance and fight or flight mode. So we have to focus on both of these when we're working on healing. There is the growing theory of why brain retraining works is when we start to work on reprogramming our thoughts and our conscious mind and then our subconscious mind, our amygdala is no longer locked into that stressful state, so it's no longer pumping out stress hormones, and that signals our mitochondria that it's safer, so that our cells are no longer overreacting to environmental stimuli or internal stimuli, and we are able to set the stage for better healing. When the cell danger response is triggered, um, our, our multicellular processes in our body are reset to kind of prioritize our survival in the world. And this can affect our metabolism, overall systemic inflammation, immunity, allergic responses like an MCAS, our gut my microbiome, brain function, our ability to sleep, behavioral changes, how we interact with our environment. This is on a cellular level. So it's important to realize that we aren't just talking about our brain and our thoughts. This goes a lot deeper than that. And it's the connection between our brain perceiving our environment and how that communicates to our cells and our mitochondria whether we are safe or not, which then either ramps up a immune system response or signals that we're safe and signals that it's okay to be in a state of healing. When we are in a state of cellular safety, when our brain and our body recognizes that we are safe, when we are giving ourselves adequate food and rest and putting ourselves in situations that trigger parasympathetic nervous system response, we are able to better heal. When we're under stress, our cells release a lot of energy in protective mechanisms. Our cells can only go through the process of repair, especially at a mitochondrial level, to conserve energy and rebuild energy and fix issues that are arising when we are in a sense of safety. Cell danger response is actually a good thing. We need this response of our body to ramp up its defenses when we're exposed to an acute injury, illness, exposure to some sort of toxin. The problem is that in our world today, we are constantly being exposed to so many threats, whether those are environmental, um, infectious, trauma, stress, perceived threats. This can even be just scrolling through social media or watching the news and taking in all of the scary things around us, which we are not really equipped to be handling without ramping up a stress response. Typical healthy cells will go through a cell danger response, ramp up that response, and then when the threat is resolved, they will go back to the state of healing and repair and recovery. But in today's world, especially if we are dealing with certain illnesses or chronic conditions or chronic trauma or stress that we have not resolved, 
our cells, just like our brain, actually get stuck in this sense of feeling fearful and ramping up, thinking there's danger and being stuck in this inflammatory energy expenditure response. So our body is ramping up inflammation, our cells are not able to get enough oxygen and nutrition, and then our mitochondria and our autonomic nervous system and lymphatic tissues are all suffering from these inflammatory and lack of oxygen responses. Theoretically, we have to find a pause or a reset button so that we can get our amygdala and our brain as well as our cells out of this danger response, this chronic state of feeling like we're, we are in a threat mode. This is where brain retraining, limbic system regulation, and healing the vagus nerve to signal safety comes into play. This is actually quite simple, but the trick is we have to be doing this every day and sustaining a dedicated practice so that we are continually putting ourselves back into a safe parasympathetic activation mode. If we do this one time, we are not really changing our baseline. This is a dedicated, committed practice that we have to show up to every day, including listening to safe, relaxing things like music and guided meditations instead of the news. Instead of doom scrolling through our phone, we are sitting and meditating in nature. We are practicing deep guided breath work. We are moving our body in slow and healing ways. We're talking about ways to uplift ourselves rather than hyper-focusing on our trauma. And anything that we do to rewire our brain and our thought patterns is also going to help us stick with these committed actions of spending time in nature, doing our breath work, committing to movement practices, doing our meditation and mindfulness, connecting with our spirituality, and finding safe and meaningful relationships that help our vagus nerve feel safe. According to polyvagal theory, we can either be completely in fight or flight mode, completely in rest and digest healing mode, or right in the middle with co-regulation, with this ability to have healthy, meaningful relationships that are actually putting us in a state of safety and helping us feel safe. And that also is healing for us as humans. We need some sort of co-regulation. Now, I do find often this is great if it can come from people, but it can also come from animals. It can come from our relationship with nature and the natural world around us. So this can look like whatever we need it to look like on our healing journey. So with brain retraining, we are enhancing our ability to take advantage of neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is our brain's ability to reorganize itself and to form new neural connections and pathways throughout life. This allows us to adapt to changes in our environment, to relearn things, to see ourselves in a different light. We also are learning to regulate our nervous system so that we no longer feel that we are completely locked into having a baseline of fight or flight mode, keeping us in an inflammatory response, keeping us locked into a stress response. We are shifting our nervous system by using skills that help us move into a relaxation state. And then we are also changing our thoughts, reminding ourselves that it is possible to shift our reality to a more relaxed state, reminding ourselves that we are safe and changing the way we think about triggers and our environment and our past trauma and our past stress to allow us to more consistently come into a state of relaxation and safety. We already know from the science that meditation and mindfulness can actually induce changes in our brain structure and function. We are taking that a step further where we're incorporating this with neurofeedback or biofeedback principles. As we continue to utilize these skills and we notice changes in our symptoms, it becomes more of a reinforcer for us that we notice that we are making some changes in our physical symptoms by changing the way that we are showing up every day in our nervous system and the way that our thoughts impact our ability to regulate our nervous system and our stress response. I also like to include consistency with time in nature and movement because there have been a lot of scientific studies showing that our movement practices enhance neuroplasticity and they promote the release of certain neurotransmitters that are connected to our mood and our ability to influence our immune system and our brain health and our mood. And so we also want to focus on how we're going to create a program for ourselves using all of the skills that we're gathering that works for us. And again, the consistency here is what's the most important. And that's why I like to provide a toolbox where it's like, here's some meditations, here's tools to regulate our nervous system, 
here's the science of why time in nature is helpful. Let's think of ways we can move our body and let's change our thoughts and behaviors using scientific therapy-based cognitive behavior therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy backgrounds so that we have a toolkit that we feel confident and comfortable and safe that we can use every single day that we will consistently be able to show up and practice these skills. The more we're able to consistently practice the skills every day and show up for ourselves, dedicating ourselves to our healing, the more that we will consistently shift our baseline of our nervous system from that of a fear and trauma response to that of a relaxation response. When our nervous system is relaxed, it opens up the capability to healing. Our inflammation goes down, our cells register that we're safe on a deep cellular level, which then opens up our detoxification pathways, it enhances our immune system, and it puts our cells into a state of regeneration and repair. If you're interested in learning more about brain retraining, I have a lot of free videos on this channel where you can learn more about this. I have a program that dives a little bit deeper into brain retraining. And I really hope that if you found this video and you are struggling with any sort of health or pain or stress or trauma issue, that some of these tools are helpful for you and that you are able to find deep inner healing and a sense of safety. I hope you all have a wonderful week full of healing and I'll talk to you soon.